Hello, say Charata. Did you know that writing down your core values is scientifically proven to be one of the most effective psychological interventions? Oh yeah, a simple exercise like this has been proven to foster greater strength, control and pride in people. It also makes them more affectionate, more tolerant, more empathetic. In the long run, knowing your core values can also mean boosting your study, reduce your health problems, and help you overcome challenges such as quitting smoking or drinking. All these benefits will stand for people who only write down their core values once for 10 minutes, and they can reap the rewards for months and even years to come. So that is why you're going to find defining your core values in nearly every self-development or life planning resource. And the problem is that in most cases we are taught to define our core values in a kind of a wrong way. Usually you're going to have to get a piece of paper and make a list of what you mostly value in life in a certain order of importance. I even gave this exercise to you recently because it is a very simple thing to do. But what is the problem with that approach? Let me explain by giving you... An example, imagine a situation where you are faced with a particular type of a decision. Why do you decide in a particular way? And somebody else, a different person, would make a completely different decision. Let's say, for example, that you are offered a promotion to take on a directorial role in your company, and that entails moving cities. The problem is that you have a teenage son who does not want to move because he does not want to be far from his new girlfriend. So now what? What are you going to do? Are you going to pass on the opportunity of this professional growth because of this relationship of your son? You might suspect that this teenage relationship is a little bit of a summer fling. It's not going to last long. And if you pass on the promotion, you might end up resenting yourself for damaging your career because of this passing win. But the opposite may also be true. You might accept the promotion and force your son to move with you, and he will be the one resenting you for getting in the way of his dear relationship. I don't know what type of decision you will make, but, but there's this thing I'm absolutely sure. Different people make different choices, and these choices are based on the values that we have. If we were to follow the common teachings on core values, then you would need to have a list ranking your core values and then base your decision on that. For example, if you list your core value career above family, that means you obviously have to take the promotion. If on the other way around, you would have a family over profession, you would, of course, uh, give support to your son and give up on the promotion. Well, the only problem is that real life is not as logical, as simple, as binary like that. If you decide to take on the job and force your son to move, that doesn't necessarily mean that you value your job above your family. Following this example, imagine that your declining the promotion leads your employers to lose trust in you and eventually fire you, and that would affect your family. You see, life is way too complex to fit in a list on a piece of paper. In the decisions that we have to make day to day, there is so much more to stake than the duality of playing one value against another value. Now, I'm not telling that you don't need to know your values or rank your core values. What I'm saying is that it is much more interesting to see your core values not as a static, linear list, but as a sort of a dynamic web. In this web, all your values are interlinked. They're dependent on each other and their positions are constantly changing over time. And there's another thing. A lot of the time, these changes happen without you noticing. And there are other times that you are presenting certain reasons that are not necessarily true. Let's examine each one of these points. The first one is that your values change depending on time and context. The first step towards reaping the benefits of knowing what you value the most is to understand the dynamic of values. To understand that your values are not fixed or absolutes, but that they change over time and depending on context. Just imagine this, you are at a concert in a massive venue and you have a can of a drink in your hand and there are hundreds of people around you, rubbish everywhere, the place is filthy, you can't even find the exit. In that context, no matter how much you value tidiness and cleanliness, how likely are you to throw the can on the ground? Now, imagine that you are now in a concert, in a 
clean and tidy theater, very fancy. You still got the same values, but now you're holding this can and in this context. How likely are you to throw that can on the ground? You'll notice that I'm talking about the same person, the same values. The thing that is changing, that is different, is the context, the environment where we are positioned at that particular moment. And as well as context, there is another major influence to factor into your values, which is time. Things you valued as a teenager probably are not so important to you anymore. And values that you have today might not be so important to you one decade from now. What I want to get across with all these examples is that your core values are not a static list on a piece of paper. They're always changing depending on where you are, who you live with, your age and your level of knowledge. And values also influence one another. For example, if you really value your family, maybe you're going to start to also value your health after, for example, having a child because you want to live longer to be there every step of the way together with this new member of the family. You see, to better understand this dynamic, pay close attention to step number two. You are not always aware of your core values. Once you've understood that your values change depending on your time of your life and the context you're in, you need to take a second step and admit that you're not always aware of what you value most right now in your current context, at your current age. You don't know. Most of the time, we are not very aware of the values driving our decision making. And even if we've taken time out to write down our values on a piece of paper, it is very difficult for us to rate each one of these to create a sort of an algorithm to determine the best possible choice. Uh, let me say this again. Values are not static lists of isolated elements. They are like this dynamic, interdependent web. It would be great if the teachings of all those self-development resources would work as promised. All you'll have to do is to create a list of what you value the most, and for every decision you have to make in your life, you just take a look at your list and see what do you value the most. And then you compare the values and say, oh, obviously this is what I have to do because I value more this over that. Unfortunately, or maybe not unfortunately, life is more complex than that, is more rich than that. Values only point us to a certain direction. And that means that even if I have clarity on a given value and I know what is important to me, I can never be sure whether my actions or my decisions will really bring me closer to that value. I might even surprise myself when, having tried to value a certain area of my life, the consequences don't bring me about the expected outcome or maybe even prevent it. Let me unpack all this with another example, imagine that I list health as one of my most important core values. So I decide to take some type of a sport. And because of the sport, I have an accident that leaves me with a permanent injury. I was trying to prioritize my health and then I had some actions, but then I ended up damaging my health forever. And there are also more complex situations like the first example we had about whether to move city or not and we were considering values such as family or professional career. The problem is that values can be interpreted very differently. And if I choose to move city, that does not mean necessarily that I'm rating my professional values above all else and I have zero consideration for my family life as a value. No, maybe I value family so much. I want great stability. I want a good standard of living. For all of us, I believe that a better wage is going to help us to make it. So in doing that, I'm making a sacrifice. I'm accepting that I'm going to have to deal with my teenage son's resentment and lack of understanding because he does not want to move today, but I hope that one day he's going to understand it was a painful decision for me to make and I made it because I had the whole family's best interests in mind. So in this case, some people might not be thinking that this is a real family-oriented decision, but for me, it genuinely is. And this brings us to the next point. We create explanations for ourselves. Reality rarely lives up to your core values. The third and final step for you to get the most out of your core values will take a little bit longer to understand. A fair share of your actions are a product of a mix of your core values and a little bit of chance, habits, 
and circumstances. Take your behavior right now, for example. Why are you here? Why are you taking part of this conversation? You could be doing so many other different things. At Adat Academy, our conversations are always about how you can be continually improving yourself, both on your personal life and your professional life. Now, why does all of that um, have any importance to you? You have so many other choices. You could be entertaining yourself. You could go have a walk with your family. You could sleep a little bit. You could be watching some funny YouTube video. Well, why are you having this conversation here? Now, before you answer, let me make this question a little bit more difficult to answer. You see, the human brain is capable of processes called confabulation and rationalization. To sum it up, um, it means that whenever we don't have a clarity of a given answer, we're going to give an explanation. And that explanation might be true or not. There is a famous story about an experiment that was carried out in 1956 in the United States to test the efficacy of subliminal advertising. And there was a film screening and there would be a message advertising popcorn and soda appearing for 0.003 seconds, a very short interval that the human eye cannot see. At the interval, popcorn sales went up on nearly 60% and soda sales went up 18% compared to other screenings where there was no subliminal message being shown. When people were asked why were they buying soda, nobody said that, oh yeah, because I saw some subliminal advertising on the screen. They didn't even notice the image because it was such, such a short fraction of a second. But the subconscious registered and was influenced by it. And even though people didn't know why, they were able to create an explanation. They said they were thirsty, that it was a warm day, or that they just wanted to have some soda. The whole story is very controversial because of the methods that were used in that experiment and the way the experiment is reported. But putting all the criticism aside, it's a very good example to illustrate how careful we have to be with our own narratives. The whole combination of dynamic values, dependent on context, time, a lack of awareness about our own values, and this confabulation and rationalization make it very difficult for us to be explaining our actions, our choices. It is very tough to reach a conscious decision and explain that our values guide our choices. So what do we do? We create stories. Think about all the stories you create to yourself. Some of them go for years and sometimes they have no basis on reality. That, I'm not saying that you're a liar or a crook or that your character is flawed or anything like that. This is how the human brain works. We, we create stories to justify pretty much everything, no matter if the stories are based on reality or not. Hard as it is to admit it, we are the likeliest person to deceive ourselves. And that is why we have to be very careful before we say that my decision to move to another city is because I value more my job than my family, or that I value my family more than my job. Things are not so simple like that. It, if life would be so logical and straightforward, as some of us might believe, we wouldn't be struggling to get satisfaction and make our choices in life. That is why you should always be careful before you judge anybody's choices, including your own. What happens when you achieve harmony in your core values? See, the main goal of our conversation today was to try and understand how core values can be a wonderful tool to help you make better decisions, as long as you grasp how the core values really work. And to gain that understanding, we've got to ditch the idea of a static list, linear list of values, and embrace a little bit of a touch of a chaos by opening up to the idea that values behave more like this interdependent, dynamic web that changes over time and also changes according to the context. Sometimes you're not even aware of what values you are prioritizing at a given moment. Other times you make up stories with a very loose basis on reality and then you can justify your choices and that is okay. We have to learn not to be too hard on ourselves and also on others. We need to stop judging decisions based on this list of values that supposedly are guiding us in every decision that we make, uh, that we are functioning as 
logical algorithms. And life is not like that. Everybody makes decisions hoping for the best outcome possible based on their point of view, their contexts, and the resources that are available to them. We need to be very careful when we hear explanations about this person did this because of that, or I did this because of that. A lot of the time this explanation does not have all the information that we need and we are very prone to rationalization and confabulation. Sometimes we try to act on a given value and we end up getting frustrated when the outcomes don't really fulfill, it's not the, the way we thought things would be like. So you might be wondering how you can uncover now your true deep core values, how they are related and how you can adapt these values to your time and context. This is not a very easy task, but it can be done. The process of gaining awareness and clarity will help us in our long-term goals. If you feel ready to take the next step in this journey, you can take a look at the link here at auto.se forward slash your values and you can access a free bonus lesson that will help you to uncover step by step your highest core values, like I said before, and also help you to draw a life plan that will help you to be on your path to achieve your biggest goals.